Jim Norton is not a doctor. He's not an expert. He's not even a good person. The views, opinions, advice, and humor of Jim Norton does not reflect those of any doctor, of Sirius XM, of Opie Radio, or anyone else. They are solely those of Jim Norton, Lyle Chipperson, Edgar Mellencamp, Paul Hargis, and whoever else lives in that chinless head of his. If any of this advice goes wrong, you are the asshole who called a comedian instead of a doctor. An icon in comedy, a fighter for freedoms, an accomplished entertainer, and a pervert. You've got problems, he's got problems. You've got questions, he's got answers, some of which are good. Call now, 866-WOW-1WOW. That's 866-969-1969. This is The Jim Norton Show. Panic time, hello. Sorry about that. My fucking, oh my god, my, I'm adjusting my thing here. I took a nap and I overslept, guys. So give me one second to get adjusted here. I don't even have my computer open. So I don't know what any of your questions are. I can imagine what some of them are at. Whew, all right, that was cool. I always take a little nap if I can. And today I was so tired um, when I got home. And I wound up just doing nothing. I wound up just futzing around, yapping with a couple of people. And I have an audition in a little while that um, I was kind of going over and reading my notes on. And I'm reading my notes, going over my script. So I'm going to open up my uh, little paper here that uh, Lou sends me. And we're going to see what some of you want to call about. Um, do you want to give me... I hate this, by the way. I hate the mail system on my Mac. Because I open up my computer, I say, get all new mail, and it should just come. But it takes fucking five minutes. So do you want to open up the, uh, how about you just put one of the people on? Hi, Bryce. What's going on, buddy? Hey, Jim. How you doing, man? Cool. How are you? Hey, I've been dating this uh, same chick for about a year now. It's pretty serious. And um, do you think it's a bad idea to, like, have the talk with how many people she's been with because I really want to know but I kind of don't want to know but it's I'm kind of obsessing on it lately well why do you want to know and why don't you want to know well I'm scared I'm scared the number's going to be like higher than what I think it should be and I think it'll I'll look at her differently but we were at a party and um, somebody made a comment like oh I've been with this many people and she said something along the lines of oh that's not that bad and in my mind it was like I was shocked that she would think that, and I kind of want to know now. Well, maybe she's hoary, or maybe she was just trying to be supportive to the other person. You know, that's a dangerous talk because no. you, you, you have to realize that if the answer matters to you, it's not relevant to your relationship. A, she could lie. B, the truth could be a truth that she did used to have but doesn't have anymore. You know what I mean? Just because somebody was a whore... I was talking to a girl recently, as a matter of fact, really beautiful, sexy girl, and she was telling me that when she's single, she does all this kinky stuff and has threesomes with girls, and she's like, but I wouldn't do that in a relationship, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't you do that in a relationship? Like, I understand wanting a serious person and someone to like you and getting out the wild stuff, but you're going to have to date a conservative guy if you're not going to do that in a relationship, because you can't let somebody know, I've been wild and fun, but now you get the goody two-shoe side, I mean, nobody wants to hear that shit. So again, you know, what she did in her past may or may not be indicative of how she'll be with you. But there really is no reason to know. Now, if you're Jim Norton and you want to know, it's because you want to know that the guys had big penises and then you can whack off thinking about it because you're a creep. That's why I like to know. Yeah. You may want to know for different reasons. I'm disappointed that they've only fucked a couple of people. Like, oh, I was engaged and then one other guy. I'm like, boo, fucking buzz off, lady. So um, I don't think you need to know. Okay. I, I, to me, I, I don't know why it's a relevant discussion. I mean, how many people have you been with? Well, I, I'm 28, and I've been with uh, 15 people. And the, per the, the reason I'm freaking out is because the, the number was the number 20 was thrown out, and she was like, oh, that's not that many. So I'm like, fuck, if my girlfriend fucks more guys than I have girls, it's really going to bother me. I don't know why, but it just does. Because we have these things about the way men or women are supposed to be about <clears throat> excuse me, sex. And uh, by the way, I know I get yelled at for the cough button. I tried to test the cough button before. <laughs> I need a new one. So I'm just throwing that out there for the listening audience. Um, 
you know, it's gonna, if it's going to drive you crazy to her number, don't forget a lot of those experiences might not have been good. You know, they're not all winners. Every time you fuck, it's not a win-win situation. Sometimes they're shitty experiences. So if, you, if, if the talk is going to bother you, then don't have it. Yeah, I, just, I feel like I'm going to just get angry one day and, like, scream it out at her or something. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I think it's better off not knowing. It's been going so well, and I just don't want something stupid like this to derail it. So I think you're right. <sighs> yeah, it's um, one of those things where if, if you see it's going to be an issue, then don't make it an issue if you like her. There's no need for it, okay? Okay, man. All right, be good. Yeah. Uh, this is a good question. Michael in Boston. What's up, Mike? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Cool. How are you? I'm good. Um, I was calling because my girlfriend and I have been having, or I guess she's really been having this problem where walking home in Alston, she runs into a lot of, like, creeps who either follow her or, like, try to corner her. And obviously, like, she'll tell me about this. And I always, like, want to beat the shit out of anyone who's trying to hurt her. But obviously, it's not, like, a productive way to accomplish anything. And I don't really know what either of us should do. To like, deal well, with is she it, is she being being put to feel? Um, is she being fe- felt threatened or just some asshole cat calling her? Um, it's it's a bit of both, like cat calling, but like recently someone cornered her on a bridge and was like basically not letting her continue to walk. It was like being very that, aggressive. That, that that's different. That's that's bad. Um, yeah. <clears throat> she should. Uh, address that maybe with the police or whatever. I mean, you know, um, th- there's no reason she should ever feel menaced. But you can't go out and just start hunting down guys that cat called her. That's insanity. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get killed doing that. Um, you know, uh, you, you got to, if you're with her and a guy says something, even that, if there's a group of guys, is, is a really tricky situation because, mm-hmm. you, you, you know, it's like you're not going to get pounded by eight guys and fucking get, the, get your teeth knocked out just because some dummy yelled something because he's probably drunk. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely if they're physically confronting her. So I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I would say don't go out and hunt them down. And if she feels threatened in a moment, she has to contact the police. That's the best way to handle that. I mean, should she arm herself or, like, carry pepper spray? Or yeah, like, absolutely. Even a- absolutely. She should carry mace, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's a, a legal, safe thing to do. I mean, it's effective. It's just a, it's a problem because, like, there's no good answer to kind of fix this culture where it's constantly going on, but I don't really know if it's ever going to change, you know? I don't know. Yeah, it's really shitty um, because, again, guys don't know how threatened they're making women feel. They don't know mm. that just a cat call a lot of times makes a girl feel really menaced. It's different. Hey, I'm just saying you look pretty, but when you start following a girl... And, so, and you're making her feel threatened. It's fucking shitty. Um, and it's like even yelling out, hey, you're hot. It's like, oh, shut the fuck up. Just <laughs> keep it to yourself, you dumb motherfuckers. Because they wouldn't do it if their chick was there. They wouldn't do it if they were standing there with their mom. Hey, nice tits, mommy. <laughs> so just shut your faces and leave people alone when they're walking. All right, man. Good luck, okay? Yeah, thanks, man. All right. James in Portland. What's going on? How you doing? Hey, hey buddy. Uh, so I listen to the replay. I'm on the West Coast. And, you know, I was thrown off by what you said yesterday, and I, I can clearly tell it threw you off as well. And when you said you guys were close, your reaction to that was quite unique. And you said it didn't bother you, but I truly can tell that it bothered you. And I, I haven't listened to today's program yet, um, but, you know, I, I think that, you know, honestly it did hurt you more than what you're leading up to. And I think that you need to say something to him. You need to be up front with him and let him know. Well, in all, in all honesty, I mean, we, we, look, we argued for 90 minutes on the air. Um, we, had, we didn't talk off the air, but we didn't leave aggressively yesterday either. And, and I would tell you now if we did. We wound, it, it's how it is with sometimes with these arguments you have with people. Um, you, at the end of the day, because I guess Dante came in, I just would leave and I said, see you tomorrow. He goes, all right, man, see you tomorrow. Uh, we said hello this morning, and Colin was there. And I know people right. think that we're, we are avoiding talking about, but we're really not. I mean, believe me, I was I was pissed yesterday, but not through the whole argument. At one point, it just became an argument. Like I was even when he said that, I was surprised. Right. Um, more surprised that he would say that on the air, uh, and not that like oh, it's a big secret, 
But I was like, I was surprised that he felt that way. But again, I, I get that too. Like you have people in yeah. your life that you're close to, and then you have people that you're not as close to. And maybe, I, I don't know what he was talking about with Ant, to be honest. We didn't discuss it again. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Um, so I, I, okay. I think you guys need uh, to get together. You guys- dude, I, I, no, I do it. I, I don't know what he was discussing about with, with Anthony, so I really don't know what that was about. But maybe he's bothered that I'm close with Ant and close with him. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I can't answer that question. But if he feels like we're not, okay, we're not. I mean, it doesn't mean we hate each other. And as far as us getting together, it, him and Ant, I, I, I can't push them any harder to get together. I've already said that I wanted them to. Uh, at one point, it was Ant resisting, and, and then now it's Opie, or maybe it was both of them. or maybe Who knows? They're grown men. If they don't want to talk, they're not going to talk. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. Everyone knows how I feel about it. I think they should do it, and on the air even, because I don't think it would get that nasty, to be honest. Um, yeah, and if off the air is better than off the air, I don't give a fuck. But for whatever reason, they're not going to do it. Maybe there's stuff I don't know that happened. I, I really don't. I can't even speak to it because I don't know what he was talking about yesterday. Yeah. Well, yeah, I have business partners, and we go through problems. And, you know, you're not that close, but eventually you guys got to sit down and talk about it off the air and, you know, and kind of make a clean play. So you guys can start. You know, I love this program. I, I love it with him, Dan. I love it without him. And uh, you know that. I mean, I just think. I mean, I felt like you were throwing a grenade in the whole program. And, well, I, uh, I don't. Again, I, 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 I don't. I don't know what his motives were. Um, I, I don't know if it was that. I think it just kind of came out. To be honest, I, I don't think. That he ha- That's the way it is, I think, sometimes with silent resentment. And thank you for the call, but your phone is breaking up a little bit. Thank you, James. I think, And again, I'm guilty of it, too, dude. I, I can't play like I'm this amazing guy to do radio with, and I'm never cunty. And I never have it on my face that I'm resentful. And I have to own up to that. And I'm not saying that to be politically correct. It really is the truth. There's times where he's annoyed me, and it's just it's been on my face. And it's like, you know, he's, he's fucking a human being. He can see it. So I know that I've been guilty of that as well. But what happens is when resentment builds up, sometimes shit just comes out. I, I don't think he was trying to sabotage the show. I think it was more that he just spit that out in that moment. Um, and maybe if he had, if he could have probably taken that back in that moment, it's probably not something he would have chosen to say on the air. Because um, off the air is, is different in the sense that you could talk about it. But you, people say they want a discussion off the air. On the air, t- things tend to be more honest. Because we both know that people are listening. And it's like when you know people are listening, you are less likely to fucking... Uh, you, you, I, personally, I don't want to get caught bullshitting. Do you know what I mean? It's like I know that's people listening. So I, I don't want to get called out like, well, you were afraid to ask. You know, we're, we're all guilty of that shit. So, um, you know, b- between that and the fact that there was that time where he's like, well, we don't have you know, the chemistry. I didn't think he meant that to be hateful. I really don't. Um, but when, you know, when someone says this stuff to you, it's like, all right, uh, what do you want me to do about it? I mean, you're my boss. That's all I can tell you. If you're going to fire me, you're going to fire me. And I, and I don't mean that in a cavalier way. I like the money. I like doing, I enjoy doing the gig, you know, and I, and I do enjoy it when he and I are getting along. I do enjoy doing radio with him, but, uh, you know, I, I can't uh, speak to what he's going to do. So I'm kind of answering Dutch's question in Pittsburgh about what do I see myself doing in the future after yesterday? Um, I'm not going to walk out of my contract, dude. And it, it didn't get that serious. Um, you know, we were snipping at each other and arguing and I was annoyed, but believe me, I've had knockdown drag out fights where I took the gloves off and I'm sure he could have taken the gloves off too. Uh, but you know, it, it wasn't like I was going for knockout punches and I don't think he was either. I think that we were just arguing. So again, uh, I don't know if that helps you or, or not. Uh, you know, it's a weird thing because like those of you that have these work things, you know, everyone thinks that we're being fake if we just go on the air the next day. And Open Ant would do it a lot, too. But you guys have to realize one thing. that We're not that much different than most of you. Like, you know, if you guys work on a job site, you know, your regular guy, like, you know, fucking regular Joe dudes, you have a fight with a guy. Let's who say who's your foreman, because Opie's my foreman. The next day, you don't always sit there and hash it right out. You know, sometimes... You and the foreman might just go, good morning, and you punch in, and you do your fucking job, and then you don't talk for a few days. We don't have that luxury. Like, when, you're, when you talk for a living with the person, you've had an argument with someone, and the next day you have to come in, and you have to be creative with them in front of people. 
Like, it's a different dynamic than most other jobs. Um, you know, anytime you're doing a live entertainment thing that doesn't have a script, you know, it's not as easy as you guys think. So a lot of times these things, they become resentments because you're afraid, okay, if this gets blown out right now and we, and we fucking, we, we blow up the mothership, as they say, you know, we can't just avoid each other tomorrow like a lot of you guys can do. And Aunt Nopey couldn't do it either. Where, where the next day you just fucking, you know what I mean, you kind of do your gig uh, or whatever your job is. You're, you're in the office and you just avoid the coffee room because, you know, you know, your coworker's is going to be there. You know, when you have to creatively talk to somebody for three or four hours back in those days or now three hours, it's a lot. So you're careful about how you have these arguments because the next day you have to look at each other and communicate in front of people. So I, I don't know if this is answering any of your questions, but there are different dynamics to these kind of fights. And, I, you know, I, I'm personally, uh, I certainly don't think he's afraid to argue with me. I know I'm not afraid to argue with him. I mean, I'm not afraid of, of fucking, you know, Chris Jericho. I'm not afraid of Opie. And, and again, I think that he would argue with me. But there's other things to be considered. Uh, and I think that was true when Open Ant were together, too. You know, it's easy for people to go, well, just let it all out on the air. But if every time someone annoyed you, First of all, nobody, none of you guys do that in your personal lives. Like, you know what I mean? None of you guys, every time your boss annoys you, or even your equal, walks over and says that. Hey, man, that fucking annoyed me when you did that. You know, you let a lot of things go, and then they tend to build up. So, you know, I don't know how you guys would have, and I'm not blaming the fans for this. I'm just saying, I don't know how anybody would have us handle this. Um, you know, it did piss me off in that moment, and I think I made that clear. So... Where it will lead from here, I don't know. I didn't feel negative today. Um, I didn't feel angry. I didn't feel like I was sitting on my anger and not expressing it. Uh, we didn't talk much off the air, but it felt comfortable on the air, probably because Colin was there the whole time. Um, okay, what's up, Dean in Ontario? How are you? Jimmy, how are you? Hey, buddy. Hey, listen, I love listening to you guys. I've been listening for a year now, and... Uh... Uh, I just wanted to tell you, you know, that meltdown yesterday, it, it actually made for really good radio. It brings you, it, it, it kind of like gives us a peek into your your lives and it brings you down to our level and, and it just, it, it gives us a different look at what's going on. Well, thanks, man. I mean, again, there's, I know there is an attraction to hearing that wall come down and people argue because I enjoy it too. I love to listen to a good radio argument. I mean, I've been in the room when Opie and Anthony were fighting, so the voyeurism was a little less enjoyable to me because I have so much at stake in that show being, you know, together. But I understand the attraction to it. And, um, you know, I, I think that, again, when the, these things are almost more constructive when they're on the air, as long as they don't get to a point of no return. Like, you have to be careful when you have these fights that you're not saying things to each other that cannot be unsaid. Like, if you're arguing with a spouse, you can't all of a sudden come out and go, that's why I fucked your best friend! Woo! You know what I mean? Like, that can't come back. So I think even when we're angry at each other, uh, you know, again, you're, you're fucking throwing jabs, but you're not trying to knock the other person's teeth out. And, and again, if the show is going to end, then I guess that's what we would verbally be doing. I don't know. But... You know, we have these moments, dude. What, what am I going to tell you? It's, uh, you know, I, who knows? I, I, I don't know. I can't speak for him. I can only speak for me. Um, yeah, I, you, I didn't, you are. I, you I, are I, did, I did think I was going to be fired yesterday. That's the truth. I was considering it. Um, I, you know, I mean, I was like, well, they're probably going to shit can me um, because they're going to think, well, I can't work with uh, Opie, so they're going to fire me. But, you know, he's really the one who can fire me more than them unless I fuck up. And I, and I actually didn't think he was going to do that. I, I didn't think Opie was going to say, you're fired for an argument. Um, if he puts me somewhere else on the channel, then that's his prerogative. Okay? Yeah, you are definitely the child in the middle of the divorce here. And well, yeah, It, I mean, it puts put you in a tough situation. It does put me in a tough situation. But, again, I don't blame Anthony for that. And I don't blame Opie for that. I really don't. Maybe if I was in a partnership that broke up and I was doing radio... I would be mad if my co-worker was going on the air with the guy I'm fighting with. Maybe, even though I know the dynamics, maybe I would feel he's being disloyal. If I was the guy who got fired, like, you know, I, here's why I, I don't choose between these guys in the sense of I will always do Anthony's show, and Anthony would never ask me not to be on with him. Because 
I, I, I'm on the air with Opie every day. So Anthony has never called me and said, dude, how the fuck could you not show me loyalty? He's never said that to me. So I won't hear that from Opie either. Um, and Anthony never said it. So whatever. I mean, however they interpret yeah. loyalty. I, I think I've proven my fucking loyalty to the radio show in, in the last 15 years. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know how else to prove that I'm a loyal fucking person. But thank you for the call, okay? All right. Thank you. All right, buddy. Um, let's see. Dan in Minnesota. What's up? Or Minneapolis. Hey, what else is what's up? Jimmy, big big fan. Seen you in Minneapolis here hey. about a month ago. Uh, really enjoyed it. Very funny guy. Thank you. Any, anyways, I'm just calm. Um, just something that bothers me that I've noticed like maybe in the last five years or maybe less than that is just what's, what's shown on TV and the, um, the violence mostly on shows like American Horror Story sure. is just, that's just, it, it's nonsensical and I'm not a prude right. or, or anything. I'm, I'm just not, but I would not want my grandchildren. Sure. Or even my children, who are adults, to to watch this shit, and it's on at nine o'clock, and it's just so to me, it's fucking bizarre how how society can show this, and then on the news not say a racial slur. I, I or, agree. Look, to find the hypocrisy in in the way we report things or the sexual aspect compared to violence, you're right. I mean, we're full of shit with that stuff. There's also the thing, though, if you don't want, I'll say this, your kids are adults. But right. if, if the, the beautiful thing is, first of all, most of the violence is on basic cable, which is a subscription service. It's a pay service. Um, you don't have to have it. You can choose to have it, or you can choose to, I believe, put parental blocks. So okay. a lot of what people are seeing comes down to good parenting or indifferent parenting. So I'm fine uh, with everything that's on TV. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, here's my argument with that. Jimmy, it, 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 it doesn't have to do with good parenting. Who in this day and age, in this modern times, doesn't have a cable TV or satellite TV? It'd be like not having an Internet or, or cell phone. And, and it's just like saying, you know, you have the right to look away. Yes. Well, you don't look away. You see this. There has to be some kind of – I would rather have a soft porn porn or a blowjob show on TV. Well, Dan, course, like me, anybody, uh, okay, that. fair enough. But here's to me here, here's the flaw. Here's the flaw in that. And I don't want to debate all this with you because this is it's, it's a long issue. Yep. The, saying that everyone has cable, you're correct. But that's like saying, hey, you know, my underage daughter is drinking. But come on, everyone has booze in the house. That's right. not an excuse. Everyone is speeding. Never gets me out of a ticket. Um, everyone is jumping the turnstile won't get you out of being arrested for jumping the turnstile as parents they have a choice and it is their job to make whatever choice they feel is best for underage children I don't care what they do I won't be held accountable for what they do I'm not concerned with what they do but I support whatever they choose because that's the parents decision okay buddy I gotta really get a whole bunch of calls but I, I understand the, the, the hypocrisy does bother me too uh, okay? Yep. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate your, your calling. Yeah, yeah, all right, buddy boy. Yes. Uh, Scott in Wisconsin. What's up, buddy? How much, man? Hi. How much? Uh, I just uh, caught uh, Anthony's show yesterday. I was wondering if you saw the beginning of that. That was rather rather hilarious, and I've been wanting to call in the last few weeks because it seems like something's been odd between you and Ope, but uh, I guess now we know why. So did you catch uh, Anthony's show? I did, yeah, I saw it. And, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I didn't feel anything was wrong between me and Ope because I got a, we texted each other on, I think it was Thanksgiving or the day after. I didn't feel any t tension whatsoever. Mm. So, what did you, you, you think of the opening? I thought it was rather, rather good. Yeah, I mean, look, or, Anthony. Or is that a certain shit? <laughs> Anthony, yeah, but you know what? I mean, again, Anthony and Opie have a lot of stuff between them. Um, this one happened to center around. You know, my fight with Opie, but th those guys have a shitload of things between them. And, um, you know, that he triggered Anthony's response, but they've had things that had nothing to do with me, you know, going back and forth. So, of course, you expected him to respond. Um, you know, I, I, I wish both of those guys were better at picking up the phone and sitting down and talking things out, you know, because it just becomes this chess match or it becomes this game of chicken that you don't even mean to be a game of chicken and in one breath you're saying that guy's a piece of shit 
And in the next breath, it hurts you because you had a long relationship. And, you know, in one breath, you're saying, uh, fuck him. Um, I don't care what he thinks of me. And then fuck him. I wish he would have went to bat for me. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it's, it's a relationship, man. And it's very, very hard for two people to work out a relationship that has fallen apart on the radio separately. Do you know what I mean? Because there's no, it's almost like resp Anthony responding to Opie or Opie responding to Anthony. That's it. They're not just in the room. So I don't give a fuck where they go. I would prefer they sit in the fucking room together, whoever has to get it done, and they make everybody's life easier. And I'd love to be there for part of the chat, not the whole chat. Let them deal with what they have to deal with, and I'll come in for the last third for whatever my part's going to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? But that's what I want to see is these two guys just talk it out, even if they remain not friends and don't like each other. That's their business. I'm okay with that. Yeah, you're doing a freaking phenomenal job, man. I think yesterday you got lambasted a little bit, a little unfair over the whole Anthony shit, you know. So yeah, I, but, I but, uh, but I've been very yeah. But again, I, maybe he feels that just because him and Anthony are, you yeah, know, he might he whatever. might be hurt over something Anthony said recently. I really don't know. I just don't know what it was about. Maybe he's right. We're not that close. He has not told me, so I really no. Can't Anthony speak to did. Anthony did address though what the big secret or he thought it was because you know the whole Reddit thing and I don't know if you guys talked about that you know but oh that Anthony oh to be him, I don't know if that's it or oh, him being a fake ca account um, yeah. I I don't know it doesn't you know I don't know that doesn't strike me I just but by the way if Anthony's doing fake accounts and if you're hearing this if you're gonna do fake accounts please just do all the racial stuff under a fake account that's all I ask please. Yeah. Um, yes, no, yes. I, I believe I believe Ant when he said that wasn't him because I don't know why he wouldn't own up to it if it was him. Um, I, I can't imagine why he wouldn't. And in all 100% honesty, he has never once indicated to me that he had a fake account to bash Opie. He never. No, I don't. I don't think it happened whatsoever. And like I said, I like both shows a lot. You're doing friggin' awesome. Uh, I don't know. All right. Hope it gets better for you, man. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks. Hey, Erica in New Mexico. Hello, cutie. How are you? Hello, Jimmy. How are you? Hi. <laughs> my goodness i gotta tell you like i feel like this like divorced kid like in the midst of all this i'm all what the hell yeah no i know <laughs> it's, it's 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 a it's awful for the listeners but you know it's not pleasant for the on-air staff either trust me well hey listen here here i mean the one good thing i mean <clears> first <throat> off i want to say like huge fan forever and uh all the way from way back like uh you got you Anthony and Opie, all you guys together, and you and Opie now, and all that. Um, you guys have, uh, it's, it's an interesting thing, because I know you guys have to deal with your own strange things as you're going through them, but it's, a, it's uh, you become this little fixture in our lives, you know? Those okay. of us that are kind of sitting around every day or commuting or whatever, you become this crazy, uh, very much like family-like member, and it's it was it was almost it was so uncomfortable yesterday <laughs> hearing you guys do that. I was like, no, no, don't quit fighting. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Well, it happens. So, so what's up, Sarah? What's your question? Anyway, um, yes, outside of all that, uh, yeah, um, just looking for a little bit of advice because clearly, like, I'm definitely somebody who is uh, addicted to alcohol, probably functioning Functioning alcoholic, I would say, uh, you know, have three kids, sure. functioning, have a job, do all that, um, drink alone a lot. And I have tried to do the whole AA thing and just didn't really, didn't really click, didn't really vibe. I don't want to continue on this path because I have three young kids, but... But you mean, like, if you don't want to do AA or a 12-step group... What do you do? Right. <laughs> well, there are other... Just Google alcohol recovery. There's probably a bunch of places to go. I imagine they cost money. 12-step places don't cost money. So therapist or one of those other places. I mean, I don't, I don't have any names to give you, to be really honest. I, if you've noticed, yeah, I'll, I never recommend specific places. I'll recommend 12 steps in general, but I never recommend a specific place. So just Google and then find another option because 12-step uh, programs are not the only option. Yeah, and I guess what I'm, you know what it is, is that I'm at that point, and I don't know if you were at that point. You were young. I know you were young when you realize you have this problem and dealt with it. 
I think I'm at a problem at a point in my life where it's a very difficult thing to come to terms with because I've been able to hide it. Sure. So that is my issue of not wanting to go to a small town in a meeting where my husband is a major football coach and, you know, like. Sure. But again, anybody, anybody, um, Betty Ford was an alcoholic, all right? She was married to Gerald Ford. Um, if you want to go out of town for to, to a 12 step help or whatever you want to, then go out of town for 12 step help. But the more important thing is you're going to embarrass your husband more if you're fucking drunk in public or if you, you bang up your car drunk. So there's a lot worse ways. And in this day and age, I don't think anybody gives a shit if you're a recovering alcoholic. They're happy for you. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I would say yeah. Google it and look up and find one that you like. Yeah, that's all. I'm trying to get over that little, uh, get over myself, like just handle it. It's uh, trying to, uh, yeah, I guess obviously that's still part of the problem is that I'm, I don't know, everything's good. Nobody knows, you know? Yeah, but it. again, they're going to find out somehow, and you'd rather have them find out because they saw you in a 12-step or somewhere getting sober than in, uh, but don't, don't let your ego think that everyone's going to be talking about you either. They have other shit to worry about. Right. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Michelle in Kentucky, hi. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm okay. Um, I don't have a question, but I just wanted to chime in, like, some other callers. I, I have been listening to, well, first O&A, and then you guys. I've been a listener since 2007. Okay. And, um... I mean, I don't know about arguments making great radio, you know, enjoyable to listen to. I mean, we all know as human beings, you know, things happen. I just, you know, it made me sad yesterday to hear all that. I've been hoping for a miracle, like a lot that you said, that Opie and Anthony would sit down and hash it out. And, you know, whatever the outcome is, it, it happens. But, you know, just to talk, like, talk about it and then you talk to them and finally just clear the air to where whether it is you know you all go on how it is or you know maybe you know someday they can do radio again or you all three you know i just i just felt bad and i hope that things get resolved so i just wanted to throw that out there um yeah okay well maybe they will maybe they won't i mean i certainly don't see it in the near future um you know what's happened since has not helped um, yeah, but obviously. again, maybe that's the way it is. Like, again, I think Ope said yesterday, all things aren't meant to be fixed. Or maybe Anthony said it. I don't know. One of them said it. So, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I mean, I think I will be there till at least October because of my, uh, uh, contract. And again, I don't hate walking in there or I wouldn't do it. I mean, I really wouldn't. Um, and I'm not that good at hiding it. I do enjoy it when it's good. I enjoy it a lot, but, um, you know, if, if he feels like we're not that close and he wants to do it with someone else who he's closer to, you know, hey, look, maybe that's a natural instinct to have. And uh, I, I can either go in October or they can get rid of me sooner. You know, it's up to them. All right, sweetheart. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks. Take care. All right, Michelle. Uh, let's see here. Nick in Tampa. What's up? Is this the General Hospital after show? Yeah. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I... Uh... I recently moved from upstate New York to the Tampa area about nine months ago. And my wife, being a woman, she wants to socialize. And uh, swapping and swinging is kind of rampant, I found, in this That's area. Good. That's good to know because I'm going down there. Good news. Yeah, definitely is. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you know, we get invited to people's houses and stuff. And, you know, naturally, sooner or later, that becomes what's going on. But all these people, none of them seem to wear condoms or really care about protection to the point where they're almost insulted if you suggest wearing a condom oh wow it's not so much that i'm i'm a prude but i just don't feel like watching my wife get you know six loads from guys i don't know well that's where we part company yeah no i understand that and uh you shouldn't if that's if that's freaking you out or is it probably a normal fear to have so yeah of course you wouldn't want to see that but is that normal? Is that the normal practice in the lifestyle? I don't know enough about it, to be really honest with you. I, I cannot give you an honest answer. I don't know enough swingers. You know more. If you're seeing people doing that, 
you know more about it than I do. So, um, you know, you, you, I, I would say it's obviously the normal practice, um, you know, if, if you're seeing it. Well, I'm just saying maybe in my particular neighborhood it's what it is, but I didn't know you being a man about town. I thought maybe you've been exposed to the... You no, know, I, I, don't, I don't know enough about that to, to be really... Uh, to be really honest, I, I do not know enough about that. Because I'm like the stick in the mud, you know, ruining the party. And uh, Well, too bad. You'd rather have that than have your wife catch something. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. It just seems kind of reckless. But... All right, that was it. All right, buddy. Good luck. Let me know what happens. All right, take care. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Oh, we just did that guy. Okay, uh, Kevin in Long Island. Oh, I think I kind of answered this. What's up, Kevin? Hello? Um, hello? Oh, we got a bad connection. All right, let's see here. Joe in Chicago. What's up, Joe? Talked to you not too long ago about my dad being an alcoholic. Okay. Uh, well, uh, last time I talked to you, we hadn't talked in like four months, and you suggested to write my dad an email, and I finally just threw a set of nuts and gave him a call. And we're back on talking terms now, and it seems good, everything's good, but he's still drinking, and I'm extremely nervous to bring it up to him because he still doesn't think it's a problem, and I don't want to go back to not talking again. Well, so, you know, there's, there's a 12-step program. There, there are, like, the, the Anon programs, which I've never been to, but, like, you're, why don't you go to a, a meeting that deals with people who are living with alcoholics? A lot of times they say don't try to get them to stop drinking. Let them keep drinking until they hit bottom. I think he's pretty much already there, Jimmy. But that's his decision to make. And I know that's shitty. Sometimes you have to detach with love or just accept that that's who he is. And he's not going to change. And you don't have to enable him. But don't keep nagging him about it. Let him do it. He wants to, to fucking drink himself to death. I know that sounds shitty, but you can't make him not drink. Is there a way that me and him could go to a program together? Um, well, that's up to him. But it, it, I would be able to go with him? Um, well, yeah, in open meetings, you can go with anyone you want, yes. Okay. All right. Okay, maybe that's something I'll try then. Um, all right. Good luck, buddy. All right, okay. thanks. thanks, Jimmy. Hey. What's up, Shane in Boston? I'm just... Hello. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Shane, how could you? Uh, let's see, Stephen Pittsburgh. Uh, what's up? Hey, check it out. Yes. Hey, so, okay, here's my problem. Um, I'm really struggling with the idea of getting a vasectomy. Uh, I just don't really ever see myself having kids. And, uh, I mean, you're a little bit older than me. You know, I, you don't have any kids. I'm just curious. Do you have any, do you have any regrets not having them or? No, I mean, or, again. Uh, no, but I don't have a wife, and I, I live a weird lifestyle, dude, because I'm a pervert, and I'm always, I'm, I'm working, you know. So I, I don't know how I would feel how my life would affect children. But if I had a traditional, quote-unquote, nine-to-five, maybe I would regret it. But as of uh, this moment, I do not regret it. So, um, you know, vasectomies can be undone, can't they? Yeah, yeah, they could be. It's just, I mean, yeah, they, they could be undone, yes. Um, yeah, so I, I don't, uh, you know, then why not do it if it can be undone? Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, why not? Go for it. All right, good luck, my friend. Thanks, man. Hey, Greg in Baltimore. How you doing, man? How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Here's the thing, Jimmy. I, I, I got to say this first and foremost. I'm a huge fan of yours, buddy. Thank you. Uh, I met you down here in Baltimore when he came down. He used to work at a radio station you were promoting. You're a stand-up guy. I've got nothing but the utmost respect and admiration for what you do and who you are. Thank you. But, Jimmy, if you're in there every day promoting your career and you're selling out shows nationally every day, how the fuck can you go on and say you're not going to renew your contract? Well, like, I didn't, how, That was a response. Hold on. I'll that? answer you. That, I'll answer you. That was a response to, uh, and again, it's heat of the moment stuff. But when he said, if you don't like it, what are you doing here? Like, don't come in. Like, like, yeah, I have to respond to that. And I did renew my contract. Uh, I mean, again, up until next year. But I, first of all, A, I don't sell out all my shows. 
They sell well, some sell poorly, some sell tremendously. It depends, I guess, on the market or maybe the venue I'm doing or how much promotion I'm doing. Uh, the radio helps a lot. Uh, I have to do a little bit of outside promotion as well. But it's not all about that either. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to be in a situation that I don't want to be in. Here's what um, I'm, with. I'm struggling with this. This massive breakup happens between a legendary show, 20 years of radio, and they go out. And then a new show arrives, and it's outstanding. I mean, you, you know that you're doing well as a show. And then this happens, and, and you talk about parting ways 10 months before contract renewals. And I'm just saying, don't you think you're shooting yourself in the foot? I don't no. think you're doing this no. the No, I'll tell you why. Um, because, like we, we, I said earlier, neither one of us, even though we were pissed at each other, but neither one of us was going for knockout blows. We just weren't. Um, I didn't walk out. If I had walked out of the studio in a huff like a little baby, that would have been shooting myself in the foot. If I had blown up and said horrible, unforgivable things or, you know, done something stupid or walked down the hall screaming, that's shooting yourself in the foot. Having an argument with somebody and then responding to, well, what are you doing here? With, all right, well, then I won't renew. I'll go somewhere else. You know what I mean? It wasn't a threat. It was just a response. So, no, I don't think I shot myself in the foot at all. Shooting yourself in the foot is behaving irrationally or thinking you're bigger than the gig. And in 15 years, I've proven I'm not bigger than the gig. I don't think I'm bigger than the gig. And, you know, I've never done the mistake. Uh, and and I've, I've, I don't shit on Jackie Martling. But Jackie asked, I think, at one point for too much money, and then he lost the gig. I've never done that before. You know, but I'm also in a weird position because I never, never nagged Opie and Anthony for money. And they were, you know, I was fine with what I got paid. But now I know I'm in a very, very unequal situation financially. Um, and I'm, it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like it's more of a, hey, it's my, you're in my show now. It's a, so I don't even want to know if I want to be in that situation because I'm 47 years old. And it's like, you know, if I'm not going to be a partner in something, I can respect why I'm not. But, you know. I don't want to be a junior partner. That's no no reflection on on Opie. It's just you know for me. So no, I to answer your question. Sorry, I don't think that I shot myself in the foot. I thought I handled it okay. I mean, I, I didn't blow up and fucking say anything terrible. Did he got my babbling to no one? Good God, I have no idea. He just hangs up in the middle of my boring answer. You know what, sir? You're fucking right. That answer was long and boring, and no one can blame you. Tony in D.C., what's up, buddy? I have a I have a more of an advice. Basically, you know, I've been listening to Howard Stern for the last twenty some years, but over the past year, I've been listening to your show and Opie show more and more. I just got tired of you know the gay jokes all the time. It seems like the Howard channels could turn into a complete uh, one running joke where the punchline is something to do with uh, being gay. All right, yeah, people get sick of stuff, sure. Yeah, but your show has been, I mean, I was listening off and on when Anthony was there. And I was kind of tuned out because, you know, he would say some things that was a little stupid, but you know, he was a funny guy. But when okay. you guys got on the air together, I liked the flow of it. I liked the different people that you guys had coming in. So my advice to you would be, there are tons of people that probably fit all in the category that I'm in. People who listen to your show, people who subscribe to the show, but don't go on Twitter, don't, you know, put all this sure. crazy stuff on Reddit and all this stuff. We just listen to the show. You got right. a good thing going on. If you don't pay attention to the numb nuts and just focus in on your job and do what you're doing, you're doing a fantastic job. And you know what? Sometimes Opie might be a little off. As a father, when you talk, when you do your Uncle Paul, it's creepy. And as a father, I wouldn't laugh at that either. I, so no, I, I, hold on. Let me, let me just jump in here, buddy. I, I understand what you're saying, and I, I wasn't mad at Opie because he didn't laugh at Uncle Paul. I understand that. Hey, maybe maybe it hits a little too close to home. You got kids; it's a weird one. Mm -hmm. But on the show, we we've, we've always had this thing where we made fun of everything. And I can, but again, if that's not like his thing, where he can be like over the top and enjoying it, I get that. I do under. That's part of the appeal of Uncle Paul, is that people don't like him. My my point was that it was it was. Uh, the way he was kind of like looking away from me and like trying to stop the bit, I felt that was my issue with it. But if he didn't laugh at it, that's okay. I mean, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, but, I'm but not that you, sensitive. Yeah, but you, you have to, you, you said to the previous call, you don't have kids. But if you right. had a kid, that would be the normal reaction. No father will find 
any, I mean, most fathers, well, there's some creepy guys in West Virginia that might get off on it, but there's some people um, uh, that, that, that can see the humor there. But most guys who have kids and young kids, and I put myself in the same category as him, you know, I've had my kids in my 40s, and I, I mean, listen, I, racist jokes, all that stuff is good. Listen, there's, it, it's, it's kind of, it, it was maybe cute at first. Why are the racist wow. jokes good? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Why are the racist jokes good? No, I'm saying I'm open to it. There's everything okay. open for game. I'm, I mean, I'm a black guy, so I have no problem with racist jokes. I give it right back. Sure. I think the N word, you know, I have a, I have the equivalent of the N word for white people. It's the P word, pedophile. So okay. if I black people don't typically like, by the way, black people don't love pedophile jokes. No, um, and, and I've said that before. They're they're not huge fans of pedophile jokes, but that's not the main issue anyway, dude. Well, so yeah. I'm not a blow. I'm not a blow up my spot kind of guy as far as ruin what I'm doing. Um, but I'm also, you know, I joke about being a cuckold, but if anybody I feel takes a shot at me, uh, I take a shot back, just like he yeah, would yeah. if I taken a shot at him. I don't think there, I don't have, obviously I don't know what's going on. You guys have all the inside in information, and that gives a whole different perspective to the people living. But from the outside, you got a good gig, and I, I would guarantee there are thousands of comedians who would cut your throat to sit in that chair permanently. And would not I understand that. I understand that. And, and I, that's why I say I'm not deluded. The show will go on without me. Um, so let them try to cut my throat and, they, and take the gig. What do you want me to do? The, the numbers speak for themselves. You guys have done well. and they're not, They won't do that. I would suspect they wouldn't do that because the numbers are there. You have... Good chemistry. You interject where OP doesn't have the, the the capabilities in certain areas to get the conversation going. You have a good thing. And I'm just saying, focus on that. Less time on the tweets and all the crazy people. If you focus on the negative side, that's what you're going to see. But there's Well, I, I wasn't focused on the tweets yesterday. I was basically just focused on what was said to me, and that was what we addressed. Yeah. Um, well, this man, wasn't this wasn't an issue. I think you're talking to the. You should either be talking to both of us together, or yeah. or speak to Oak because that's not. Uh, in, in my point yesterday wasn't that at all. So I got to run. We got a lot of calls, and I do appreciate the call. Good job. Good job. Uh, I uh, thank you very much, but I don't see myself as sabotaging uh, anything. And I, I think, and you know, anyone who knows me cannot accuse me of being a sabotager of radio shows. And um, let's see, Jerry in, uh, Jerry in Texas, what's up? Hey, Jimmy. Hey. Hey, uh, uh, get away from uh, the, sad, the sad talk of yesterday. Sure. Uh, I was going to let you know this morning when you guys were uh, viewing that video on uh, Rockstar, that movie Rockstar where the police yes. thing takes the... Yeah, was a, that movie was loosely based on Rob Halford and Judas Priest. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, there's a that especially that scene right there. Um, and another fine fact is Zach Wild played in that movie. Who was he? He was the lead guitarist for the band. Oh, I did not know that. I'll have to watch that. Was he on camera or off camera he played? No, he was on camera. Yeah, he had a very small speaking parts, you know. I mean, maybe agree with the band on a few things and they'd go to him and you know, on stage, he, you know, he was there. So, yeah, uh, I tried to call this morning, but I understand why he didn't have the phones really going. So, <laughs> okay. But oh, and uh, just real quick, man. Uh, my wife, man, she she sent me a crazy. Well, I don't think she really meant to send me the text. Okay. And uh, uh, I, I really don't know how to feel about it. I uh, mean, text. The, it said I had two tickets to Jim Norton February 6th in Louisville, Kentucky. Oh, well, I hope she meant to send it to you, sir, because that's a heck of a show. It sure will. Can't wait to see you, Jimmy. Hey, man, right. I love you, you. Love this show. Love Oak's show. Love Ant's show. Love you guys all. I think this is stupid. Keep your chin up, man. We'll get through it. Thank you very much. We only got a couple of minutes left. Jesus Christ. Uh, Kevin in Texas, what's up? You got me now, Jim? We do, yeah. We have to wrap up soon. Right. Um, I can't right. believe it. Let's play. I'm going to play devil's advocate, but ah! your, sorry. your career could be going in, a, in maybe a different direction if you weren't on the radio. Uh, would, I, would my career be going in a different direction if I wasn't on the radio? Um, again, yeah. you never know. 
I, you, I don't know because I never saw myself when I started out doing radio. I mean, look, Artie Lang still works. Um, I think, you know, it was easier to sell tickets when he was on Howard, and the same for Jackie. Um, the, I don't know if there's examples of guys who are doing better since they left radio, but, um, you know, I, I certainly think my career would continue, and I'd be, I'd, I, I, I don't think the money would be that affected, you know. Yeah, I'd make less, but I, you know, I'd be able to go out and do more gigs, so we'll see. Well, I mean, I saw you when you came into Houston a couple of months ago, and you were on the radio show that I was listening to, which is an AM radio show, a guy named Michael Berry. Well, Michael Berry is probably one of the most conservative talk radio people in the state of Texas. Okay. And I'm like, and he's got, you know, and I, and I heard you on there, and I was like, holy crap. I mean, it was just, it, that's very different to see you on that type of, you know, a platform. Yeah, I like I like him actually. I remember, and, him. He, and he's a great, great guy. Yeah. And the reason that one of the producers is a huge was a huge O and A fan, and that's how he reached out to you was because of that, because of O and A. All right, I got to run, man. Because we have to wrap up here. I apologize, but the, the phones are lit. Me and Opie should argue every Tuesday so that Wednesday the advice show phones ring off the hook. Maybe I'll go on Ant Show next week and argue with him on Tuesday. And then Wednesday I'll have a fucking a dynamite advice show. Thank you guys for calling in. Uh, there's a shitload of I didn't get to, but it's a lot of the same questions. Um, as far as the guy who wants to get laid, who just got engaged, I'm sorry I didn't get to you. Look, I mean, is it worth for one more load? Is it worth fucking up your relationship for? You know what I mean? I would almost say don't do it. If you, if you, if you only want to go out and do it one more time, just jerk off. Just fucking jerk off, for Pete's sake. All right, guys, thank you for the calls. I cannot believe an hour is up already, and I'll see you next week if I'm still alive. Take care. Thanks for listening to The Jim Norton Show. Hear all that advice whenever you want to on demand at SiriusXM.com slash on demand. On, demand. on Sirius XM is real.